I always grew up with the understanding that Hosanna was basically the special Palm Sunday version of Alleluia. Every other Sunday of the year, Alleluia was fine. I mean, except during Lent, of course. But for this one Sunday, just before Easter, the way that we would worship God or give God praise was by shouting this particular word. You'll imagine my surprise then when later in life, as I started to study the Bible and church history more, I learned that Hosanna wasn't a synonym for Alleluia. It was actually a cry for help. You see, Hosanna translates to God save us. It's a plea that recognizes that the forces that we're facing are more powerful than we are and that we're relying on a power greater than ourselves for our survival and our well-being. The people who gathered along the road for that first Palm Sunday profession, procession were looking for God's help. Many of them were in town to celebrate the Passover. It's a holiday in the Jewish calendar that remembers the way that God intervened and liberated their ancestors from slavery to the world's great superpower of the time, the mighty Egyptians. By the time that Jesus and the people around him are living, they're there under the authority of a different superpower. This time it's Rome. Roman armies marched in the streets of the Holy City. Roman taxes were extracted from each and every citizen. Roman puppet rulers made sure that everything that happened in the local area was to Rome's liking. And so when Jesus, the one they called Messiah, came riding into town, the people cried out, asking for God to save them. They said, Hosanna. These days, the world is squaring off with a different kind of superpower. This one doesn't have armies, but has proven itself to be stealthy and deadly. It doesn't have any political influence, and yet it's reordered entire societies. It fires no weapons, and yet somehow keeps adding to its body count. And as the stories on the news grow grimmer by the day, I'm getting a better sense of what that crowd was yelling about so many years ago. Because recently, I'm less interested in shouting hallelujah than I am in whispering, God save us. Suddenly, those hosannas of 2,000 years ago have a different sort of ring to them. They feel less like words on a page and more like the cries of a desperate heart. As I record this, the most recent models suggest that we may well see a quarter of a million deaths from COVID-19. The safer at home orders and social distancing have many of us living different lives than we could have imagined even a month ago. I know that some of you have lost your jobs or had your hours or paychecks drastically cut. Others have taken on the task of homeschooling your children, of working from home, or juggling both at the same time. And still others have been deemed essential and might very happily take a break to come home and rest and recover. Except that going home after being out all day puts your family at a greater risk. It's in times like these that we long for easy answers. We want a quick fix, a miracle cure, something that will let things go back to the way they were, to the way they used to be. And yet none of those things is on the horizon. 
And so we're left saying Hosanna. God help us. Those people along the road expected that Jesus' claim to be the Messiah meant that he'd be the great military leader. That he'd be another Moses. The people being led into freedom. That Moses would teach them how to crush their oppressors and Jesus would do the same. And how much would you and I love it if Jesus showed up as the great physician, striding onto earth with a miraculous cure that protects the sick, that makes the sick well and protects the healthy from ever contracting this terrible disease in the first place. But it's rarely the case that God's power is put to use that way. Instead, Jesus chooses to stand alongside God's children in the midst of the storm, to sit alongside us at our bedside as we are ill, and to hold on to us as we weep. Because, dear friends, there's incredible power in vulnerability. There's strength in vulnerability. Because when we admit our vulnerability, it's then that we truly recognize just how powerful God actually is. When Paul, one of the great early teachers of the church, was at his lowest, it was then that he encouraged others with these words. He wrote, God's power is made perfect in weakness. The path of Jesus doesn't circumvent death but instead it marches through it to the other side the path of jesus isn't about shallow hope or quick fixes but about brutal honesty about sin and death and then jubilant honesty about the final victory of god over all things over sin and death dear friends we will get through this God will hold us through this. God's claim in our lives will endure through this. And the Holy Spirit will continue to work in, with, and through us in the midst of this. These are uncertain times, dear friends. We don't know what tomorrow will hold. But we do know that whatever we face in this life we can cry Hosanna. God help us. And the one who claimed us in the waters of baptism will draw near to us yet again, take us into his arms, and never let us go. And that's our hope for today, brothers and sisters. Peace be with you, and amen. <laughs>